This morning, we are celebrating baptism. We have lots of friends here from out of town who will be multiple generation baptisms here at St. John's. Uh, the children are not only from Ann Arbor, but from Baltimore and from San Francisco. And St. John's has that attraction. We tend to draw people back into what is considered home, even though where their houses are, are very far away. On, this, on November 10th, 1859, two historic events happened on this corner of Woodward and what was known as High Street, now Fisher Freeway. One thing that happened that day was that the chapel was dedicated by the Bishop of Michigan. It was the first Sunday of worship, or I'm sorry, the first Thursday of worship, and the building was dedicated to the greater glory of God at an even song service in that chapel. Also that day, St. John recorded in her parish register, baptism number one. A Justin Alden, a small child, was baptized at the baptismal font in the chapel and became the first official member of the body of Christ to be made regenerate and born again, born anew here at St. John's. Today, by grace, we will have baptisms number 27,000 256, 57, 58, and 55. Sorry, I skipped. 55 and 58. That's 7,258 members of the body of Christ who have become regenerate and born anew in the waters of baptism here at St. John's. And that is something to celebrate. Now, I sent out a bunch of letters to people who are on Mark, 
said that Nathaniel must have been his first name since Bartholomew was a common way of describing somebody in relationship to their father. He was probably Nathaniel Bar Tolome. Somebody whose last name was Tolome was the father of this man. But besides their introduction to the gospel, and in John's gospel, tells him, you're going to see even more wonderful things. You're going to see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. A wonderful reference to Jacob's dream, where he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on that holy place where he slept. And beside that, we know not much else other than the fact that he was a witness of the resurrection. All the apostles were. We know that he was present at Pentecost and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then we are told that he is numbered among the apostles in the Acts of the Apostles when they began their public ministry to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. The church <coughs> legends say that Bartholomew started out preaching the gospel in India. The early church makes a claim that the gospel of St. Matthew was brought to India by St. Bartholomew. And then he wandered into a region of the world called Armenia, which is a part of where Turkey is now, and northern Iraq and Iran, where for the good news of Jesus Christ, for the calling of the pagans into a relationship with the true and living God, he was rewarded by being flayed and beheaded put to death for the truth of the gospel. We do know the church says that all of the apostles, except for St. John, our namesake, were martyred for the faith. And therefore, all of St. John's are commemorated, wearing red as the blood of the martyrs. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, when we talked about the persecutions of the Middle East, the one thing the church has proven again and again is that the blood of the martyrs of the church and where people are willing to give their life as a witness of the love of Jesus Christ where that happens the church grows and we pray that this will be so in the Middle East and in Africa and in Asia where so many are giving their lives today we celebrate that this parish will be four more people into the kingdom of God. These children will be baptized, will be made heirs of the kingdom and children of God, and will receive that gift of the Holy Spirit as they are regenerate and born again. And then their sponsors and parents will promise that they learn the creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and all other things which they ought to know to their soul's health. In other words, they will begin their discipleship today and then be presented to the bishops as soon as the bishop is instructed to be confirmed by him, to be encouraged in the Holy Ghost and once again prepared to set out on mission and ministry. We do baptisms on Sundays because it's a reminder as well to all of us that we are called to new life in Jesus. And then that call is not static, but active. We are called to share the good news, to spread the good news, and to bring more and more people to a knowledge of Jesus Christ that I have to do four baptisms a week. Every week. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I've memorized the baptism service by now. Wouldn't it be great if we all memorized it? my lips to God's ears on that one. But it all starts today. With the witness today. With the new life today. And with our continuing dedication to sharing that good news. St. Mark of witnessed the gospel and died for the sake of the faith. May we witness as well and he so will. In the name of the Father and of the Son.